For over two centuries, the life of Aaron Burr has captured the imaginations of people around the world. Whether it's a hit Broadway musical, the dozens of novels written about him, or even a milk commercial, Burr has long been the object of intense scrutiny and fascination. He was born in 1756 to a prominent New Jersey family, a grandson of the Great Awakening preacher Jonathan Edwards. Orphaned at age two, he nonetheless graduated from Princeton and served as a lieutenant colonel in the Revolutionary War. By the age of 45, he had assumed the second highest office in the land and very nearly won the presidency itself. In 1801, after achieving an unexpected tie in the Electoral College, Burr chose not to concede the contingent election in the House, at least not enough to satisfy his opponent, Thomas Jefferson. In so doing, he lost the trust of much of his own party. Yet, even then, none of his critics could have predicted the dramatic turn of events that would lead to Burr's trial for treason. Hang on to your hats, we've got the Burr Conspiracy on this episode of Bigfoot's Great American History Show. Before we get into the Burr Conspiracy, let's establish the origins of the growing fear at the time that America's western states and territories were on the brink of secession, and introduce an American politician and double agent deep in the pockets of the Spanish, who would later ally himself with Burr. In 1762, Spain acquired the Louisiana Territory from France. This served them well as a buffer between the silver mines of Mexico and the growing number of pioneering Americans. Following the American Revolution, the United States boundaries bordered Spain's at the invaluable Mississippi River. Spain, however, controlled the river's outlet, New Orleans, which they closed to American trade in order to discourage settlement into Kentucky and Tennessee. In 1786, American John Jay negotiated a treaty with Spain which ignored the issue of New Orleans and instead granted Americans access to other Spanish markets. This benefited eastern merchants and threw western farmers under the bus. Though the treaty was never ratified, it disillusioned many frontiersmen to the politics of the east. In 1787, Thomas Jefferson said of America's western territories that, quote, separation was possible at every moment. Spain naturally did its best to convert the loyalties of disgruntled American pioneers who were already physically separated from their governments by the Appalachian Mountains. The Spanish contacted Western politicians, offered trading licenses to settlers in Kentucky, and enlisted at least one prominent American as a double agent. James Wilkinson was a Revolutionary War veteran whom Virginia politician John Randolph once called a villain, quote, from the bark to the very core. Rumors that Wilkinson was secretly in the service of Spain were confirmed years after his death. As Agent 13, he had sworn allegiance to the Spanish crown and received $2,000 a year for 15 years. Thus, the so-called Spanish conspiracy to orchestrate the secession of American territories was very real. By 1805, Wilkinson had become the highest ranking officer in the U.S. Army and, at Burr's suggestion, governor of the Louisiana Territory, recently purchased by the United States. Vice President Burr was removed from his party's ticket for the 1804 presidential election. He ran for governor of New York instead and lost that election as well. In the end, he took out his frustrations on former Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton, who had been heard denouncing Burr at a dinner party. When Hamilton refused to deny that he had intended to impugn Burr's honor, Burr challenged him to a duel. On July 11, 1804, the vice president shot and killed Hamilton in Weehawken, New Jersey. Facing intense backlash, Burr fled to an island off the coast of Georgia, his political career ruined. Murder charges were eventually dropped. All the same, he was left desperate to rehabilitate his reputation. In August, he contacted the British, requesting money and ships to, in the British minister's words, effect a separation of the western part of the United States. Over the next year, he met with a number of influential Westerners, including James Wilkinson and future President Andrew Jackson. To what end remains the subject of much debate. In August of 1806, Aaron Burr sent James Wilkinson a coded letter detailing an enterprise to bring military force to Louisiana, indicating that he had won support from the British and inquiring about useful persons west of the mountains. Wilkinson received the letter in October, whereupon he informed Thomas Jefferson of the plot. Was he struck by a sudden bout of conscience, or did he simply bet against Burr? As the calendar turned to 1807, Burr met up with about 60 supporters and led them down the Mississippi in flatboats toward New Orleans. Before arriving there, he was arrested. 
Naturally, he denied any intention to attack U.S. territory. Whether he indeed simply hoped to conquer Spanish Texas or Florida for the United States, or hoped to install himself on the throne of a new empire, as many then and since have speculated, remains unknown. Paroled, he fled into the wilderness. In February, he was arrested again, now disguised as a backwoods river man. He was brought back to Richmond to face charges of treason. As spectators flocked to the Virginia State House, President Jefferson pushed hard for Burr's conviction. The man who had nearly stolen the presidency had now threatened to steal newly purchased territory essential to Jefferson's dream of spreading republicanism from sea to shining sea. The president thus offered blank pardons to reluctant prosecution witnesses. According to writer Washington Irving, when Burr and Wilkinson reunited in court, Burr looked his betrayer up and down and coolly turned away. Unfortunately for the prosecution, the one-time Spanish spy proved unreliable yet again when the defense proved that Wilkinson had doctored the coded letter from Burr. In the end, Chief Justice John Marshall, presiding, ruled in favor of a narrow definition of treason as defined by the Constitution. Burr had never actually taken up arms and, accordingly, was found not guilty. Disgraced, he lived in Europe for four years before returning to New York in 1812, where he lived in relative obscurity until his death in 1836. Share your thoughts on Aaron Burr's dramatic fall from grace in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this content, do me a favor, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It's no understatement to say that Chief Justice John Marshall transformed the nature of the Supreme Court forever. If you're interested in learning more, check out this video. Until next time, this is Bigfoot saying so long and save me a seat at your next campfire.